Uh, hello everybody, uh, in this session we're going to look at semiconductors and diodes. We're going to look at the P and N type materials, so what P and N actually means, how the P and N working together makes a diode, and we're going to look at the Zener diode. So we'll start off talking about the semiconductor. So a semiconductor starts like generally a silicon or germanium. Uh, silicon's a bit more stable. Um, and silicon basically has four electrons in its outer shell. The resistance levels of a, a semiconductor are that in between a conductor and insulator. So it's 50 feet. It's kind of set in the middle. However, uh, semiconductors are affected by temperature. Um, so what that affected by temp, they have a negative temperature coefficient. Uh, and what that means is, um, let's write that down there, is what that means is, is that the, the colder the electron, the, sorry, the colder the silicon gets, um, the less its resistance is. So in other words, it becomes more conductive. So that's probably why, if you think about computers and so on, uh, they generally run a lot better when they're cooler uh, because some of the, obviously computers and your phones, modern technology is full of semiconductors. So the cooler they are, uh, the better they run. So if we talk about then uh, the process of actually making uh, different types of materials for semiconductors. So we said it starts off at silicon, but what we need to do is, is we need to uh, what we call create two types of charge state. And that is a P type and an N type. So what we have to do basically is we get some silicon and it, 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 is a, it goes through a process where it is doped with another material. Uh, an impurity so in the case of the p-type material we dope it with boron and what boron does is that actually takes away an electron um, which basically means that there are more protons in the uh, in the that particular uh, atom than there are there are electrons so it becomes positively charged and that's a process which is under which it is called doping with negatively charged materials, what we do is it is uh, doped with uh, a material such as arsenic. There are others, but what arsenic does is that creates free electrons. So that actually adds electrons into the outer shell. Uh, so this basically makes the, um, the silicon negatively charged. So in the case of the P-type material, we, take, we add the boron and that effectively takes an electron away. So we have three electrons in the outer shell. Uh, the outer shell is known as uh, the valence shell. And where the electron was, it leaves what we call a hole. And that hole can be filled by another electron. If we look at the n-type material, so what we do with an n-type material is negative. So obviously we have our, our pro uh, protons in the center there, the nucleus. What we have is we silicon has four electrons in its outer shell but what we actually do is because we've added extra electrons we have um, one more free electron so if I just draw the outer shell there so that's the outer shell and then we have this extra electron so a p-type material has a valency of three basically means it's it's got uh, more protons and electrons and n type has a valency of 5 and silicon is bang in the middle 4 so we've now created a p type material and an n type material let's just see how this works in a diode now a symbol for a diode is simply a triangle and the triangle points to the direction, what we call the forward bias. So this direction there, that is known as forward, which we go through from positive, which is known as the anode, to the cathode with a K, which is negative. So electric current will flow forward that bias. Okay. If we put it in reverse, then the current will not flow. So effectively, a diode is a one-way valve. So the diode is made up of a sandwich between a p-type material and an n-type material that are basically joined together. 
And if we look inside there on the PTAP material, you've got uh, it's positively charged. So in other words, there's holes in there. So I've drawn the holes as actually, uh, to, just in, for clarity, just basically as, as positive charges. Uh, there we're waiting to accept um, a negative charge. Whereas obviously in the negative material, we have more electrons. So if we actually uh, connect this into a circuit, we'll be able to hopefully visualize what's going on. So if we look at this circuit here, we've got a, a simple cell, a battery or a cell, that's effectively supplying a lamp. Yeah, just a lamp, light bulb. Um, that's our load. If we think about what's going on here, so the longest plate on the symbol, that's the positive plate. And in the, in the actual um, diode, remember that's the positive material, that's negative material. So what will happen is because that's the positive plate, all the electrons in the negative material will uh, will obviously be attracted to the positive plate. And if we look at the electrons here in the cell, then all the electrons will be effectively attracted to the protons, which are on this side. So they kind of meet in the middle. So the electrons, let's talk about electron flow. Remember the electrons flow from negative to positive. So this is where your electron flow, um, in order to understand how semiconductors work, we are dealing with uh, not conventional current flow, but electron flow. Remember the electrons flow from negative to positive. So the electrons in the n-type material are pulled towards the positive plate of the cell. So they meet in the middle and effectively what would happen there is the light would come on. Okay, so that would be nice and bright. Let's see what happens when we turn the, uh, the cell the other way around. So what we've done now is we've turned the cell the other way around. So now this is the positive plate. So we've actually reversed the battery, the cell in the circuit. Um, so what's going to happen now with the with the P and M material is there's our P, there's our N. So our diode is still connected as it was before. I'll just draw the symbol in there. So, but what you'll notice now is the um, technically the, the the conventional current flow I in the circuit is going to try and flow from positive to negative. All right, there's our negative plate. But in the actual diode. In the n-type material, what's happening here is the electrons suddenly in the material all dash to this side because they are detecting the positive charge of the cell. So all the electrons in the material basically move to the extreme right of the material. And that leads a void, nothing in there. And likewise... The protons in here, though the holes in the material, if you like, though obviously they're waiting to accept a the electron, they get pulled to the left because they're attracted to our negative charges there. Okay. And what happens in the material is you get what we call a depletion region there. So there's nothing, there, to be fair, that's incorrect because you do get the odd stray, you get the odd stray in there, you know, that's floating about. Um, let's just change that a little bit on there, put that so it's correct. Yeah, you get the odd stray in there, but nothing significant. So that area in the middle there, this area is called, if I just draw that there, that's called the depletion area, depletion region. So because the electrons can't hop from one to another because basically they've all been pulled in opposite directions. It's a little bit like Moses, if you think, with his staff, um, clearing the, you know, moving the water. You're like, we've got this like void in the middle. Basically, no current will flow, so the light will stay off. Okay, whereas when the cell's in the other way, the electrons in the P material are pulled, attracted to the uh, positive plate of the so of the cell so your electrons will be able to flow round like so so if you imagine they don't flow one at a time they all flow obviously together they all flow in one um so the cell gives off electrons on one plate 
um, they run round our circuit, through the light, through the NP junction and back on the positive plate until all the electrons in the cell have gone. And then your battery's flat. Yeah, okay. Um, and that's it, pretty much. So the diodes only allow current to flow one way. So a Zener diode is different in the fact that a its symbol slightly different. It has this little tick on the side there, but the Zener diode is actually connected in reverse bias, and there's a reason for that, because what a Zener does is it stabilizes the voltage. So if we were to put any voltage greater than 5.4 volts across the Zener, the Zener will always give 5.4 volts, no matter what the input what the voltage is flowing into it so it, it literally keeps everything at 5.4 uh, if we use the uh, Yenka software just to um, just to simulate this let's have a look so there's our Zener that's connected in reverse bias there and if we increase the um, the voltage you can see if we lift the voltage to 2.7 and we get 2.7 volts across it now we always you always need a protection resistor in a diode. You can never ever connect any diode directly across a voltage uh, without any kind of limited resistor, because you will blow the um, you'll blow the uh, junction in the diode. So all diodes will need uh, some kind of resistance in there if you're going to connect them to a battery. That's very important. So if we look at uh, lifting this up now, you can see there. Um, so at the moment, it's the Zener voltage is 5 volts, so we're getting 3.73. So we go a little bit higher. Get this to work. Now we get to 7.58, which is greater than the Zener voltage. You can see there the Zener, you've got a slight tiny little volt drop in there. All right, okay, so you're going to get a little bit of, um, of, 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 of loss within the Zener, but 4.97, but hang on a minute, we're putting nearly, well, over 7.5 volts there, and it's still staying at, five, at uh, just under 5 volts. If I lift that up even higher to 10 volts, so now we've got 10 volts flowing into the circuit, we've still only got 4.98. So as long as that voltage stays, so I'm going to oscillate the voltage up and down, up and down there, look between... So between 5 and 10, the voltage is staying at 4.9 volts. Now, that's really good for regulation. So on a motor vehicle, uh, on an alternator, when you, the, the more RPM an engine does, the quicker the alternator is rotating, and that will effectively alter the, the charge voltage. And if, we, if we're not careful, the voltage will get so high that it could actually... Uh, blow and uh, basically destroy all electronic components within the automotive auto vehicle so alternators have what we call diode packs and what diodes do is they do rectification which we're going to look at next but they also regulate the voltage to keep a voltage in, in a motor vehicle it would be 13.9 volts or 30.8 ish volts um, so zeners are used for regulating voltage so you can clearly see there as i move that up and down the Zener voltage is effectively um, staying pretty constant, which is good for regulation. Okay, so so just to round up then, we've looked at P and N-type materials. Uh, just discussed that P is a positive material, so it has more protons and electrons after a doping process. N-type material has more electrons and protons. Again, it's been doped after a, a process. Um, a diode, a conventional diode, um, effectively only allows current to flow one way. Okay, um, the symbol for a diode is as follows: um, positive or the anode on the left through the junction to the cathode on the right. A Zener diode effectively is connected in reverse bias, um, and a Zener is used as a voltage reference or a voltage uh, regulation. Um, Okay, the next uh, video we're going to look at, we're actually going to look at rectification, so we'll see how these diodes can be put to use. Hope you found that interesting. Uh, thanks for watching.